Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Most of us would have sat on park benches. I don't know if you've noticed it or not, metal chairs seem a lot cooler or hotter than cushions or wooden chairs when you sit on them. This does not apply to just the chairs in parks. Any metal chair which is indoors tends to have this effect. Curious, right? There's a very simple reason behind this. It's thermal conductivity. We'll talk more briefly about this topic in this video. You see, heat travels in solids by conduction. Different solids have different structure and packing. The solids which have very good thermal conductivity are called as conductors and the solids which have bad thermal conductivity are called as insulators. The reason behind the difference in the thermal conductivity is the arrangement of the molecules. A good example of a conductor is copper is an excellent conductor of both heat and electricity. How this occurs is because of the delocalized electrons the metal has. Copper has an atomic number of 29. This means that the atom has 29 protons and neutrons in its nucleus and 29 electrons revolve around the nucleus. If you notice the way in which the electrons are arranged, you'll see that only one electron is present in its outermost shell. This electron is very loosely bound to the nucleus due to how far it is. Because of this, the outermost electron of each atom overlaps with many other atoms. This gives rise to a cohesive binding force that holds the metallic crystal together. These are called delocalized electrons as they belong to the metal and not to any specific atom. When heat is passed through the metal, the delocalized electrons become responsible for transferring heat through the metal. The easier it is to move the delocalized electrons, higher is the thermal conductivity of the material. This can be easily proved with an example. Silver has a very high thermal conductivity value, much higher than copper. The reason behind this is its atomic structure. The electron in its outermost shell is much farther than the electron in copper. Because of this, it can move much more freely and conduct heat and electricity much better than copper. Most non-metals are bad conductors of heat, with few exceptions to it. The bad conductors are called insulators. The reason behind the bad conductivity is the absence of delocalized electrons. Let's take an example of glass. Although glass is made of many compounds, it mostly consists of silicon dioxide or SiO2. Silicon forms a covalent bond with two oxygen atoms. Here, instead of donating an electron, silicon shares its electrons with oxygen. This means that all the electrons in the atom are bonded with the nucleus and are not free. Because of this, we will have no localized electrons. So how do you think heat is transferred? Conductors transfer with the help of electrons, whereas insulators transfer heat by means of vibration. A point of confusion that most of us might have here is that Aren't insulators not supposed to transfer heat? Objects which do not transfer heat at all are called perfect insulators and it's a theoretical assumption. When heat is applied to solids, vibrations occur through the atoms in the lattice of the structure. These vibrations are responsible for the transfer of heat through the insulators. Since most insulators are amorphous in nature, the vibrations tend to scatter within the lattice. This leads to bad conductivity of the heat. However, there is a silver lining to this. When the atoms are properly arranged in the lattice, it increases the thermal conductivity of the insulator. This is the reason why a few crystalline solids have very good thermal conductivity. A good example for this is diamond. Diamond is an electrical insulator, but has a thermal conductivity value of 1000 watt per meter Kelvin. This is 2.6 times the thermal conductivity value of copper which has a thermal conductivity value of 385 watt per meter Kelvin. Generally, as a rule of thumb, it is often considered that materials with high electric conductivity have high thermal conductivity. But the opposite is not true because high thermal conductivity cannot mean high electric conductivity. Electric conductivity is dependent on the movement of electrons and thermal conductivity is not. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hope you understood why conductors conduct heat better and insulators don't conduct heat properly. Do subscribe to our channel. We post videos daily so that you, the viewer, can learn something new every day. If you feel that you've learned something new in this video, please don't forget to like the video. We'll meet in the next video. Until then, stay safe and bye.